Jai Hind students, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this lecture, uh, I will mathematically verify the lens equation for both convex lens as well as for concave lens. So, let's start with the convex lens. And here we have got two cases. We are aware when the object is placed beyond the focus in front of a convex lens, then the nature of the image obtained is always real, right? So, we'll prove lens formula when the image is real. And in the second scenario, when the object is placed between the optical center and the focus, then the nature of the image obtained is virtual, right? So, for that case also, we will prove lens formula. In both the cases, the formula will remain valid. So, basically, a lens formula, which is the relationship between U, V and F, it is valid for every type of lens, be it converging lens or diverging lens. It is valid for any nature of the image, whether the image nature is real or virtual. So, let us verify this fact. So, let's answer a case 1. Case 1 is when the nature of the image obtained is real. Right? So, let's try to prove it. So, let's draw the diagram. So, this is a convex lens. This is the optical center students. And suppose this is the principal axis. Now, you need to locate these reference points F to F. As I've told you numerous times, they are to be equidistant. These are all equidistant. We are dealing with biconvex lens. So, please ensure that these distances are equal. Right? So, image obtained should be the real one. So, the object is to be placed beyond F. Beyond F, you can place anywhere. The object can be placed anywhere beyond F. In such a case, the image obtained would be real. So, this is the reference line from where the deviation of the path will be considered. So, suppose object is placed over here, A. We have already done this case in the ray diagram, right? So, we are aware of the rules. A ray which is parallel to the principal axis. After suffering refraction, in the case of convex lens, it will tend to pass through the focus like this. It will tend to pass through the focus. Right? <coughs> Second, student, this is the optical center. It is a point within the lens from where the light when it passes through this particular point remains undeviated. So that's the second rule. So light from the object when passing through the optical center it will remain undeviated. So this is where this is where the intersection of the two refracted rays will be obtained. Okay, this is the point. And I told you whenever the two dark lines intersect, it means that the nature of the image must be real. Two dotted lines that is virtual. One dark, one dotted line that will be again virtual. So here we'll drop a perpendicular. So this is the inverted enlarged image obtained a dash b dash. So we are already aware of this situation, isn't it? Whenever the object is placed between f and 2f, then its real inverted enlarged image is obtained beyond 2f. Clear? We have already done it. So we have already studied the nature of the image form. Right? So let's name it. This is a o b. This one is a dash O B dash and let us consider this to be M. Let us consider this point to be M. Now look, these are the two parallel lines. So obviously O M it should be equal to A. These two distances are equal. These two being parallel lines. Right? Now what to do is we need to consider two pair of triangles. Right? Students, you must remember the manner in which we have derived mirror form. In this case also we need to proceed with a similar fashion. Right? So what to do is, let's consider triangle AOB, let's consider triangle AOB and triangle A dash OB dash and let's consider triangle A dash OB dash. Now look students, this angle is equal to this angle. These are vertically opposite angles, isn't it? This is 90 degree, this is also 90 degree. So by AA corollary, these two triangles are similar. Look, AOB, this triangle, is similar to this triangle, A dash, OB dash. So these two triangles being similar, their corresponding sides must be proportional. So these two triangles are similar. Therefore, 
their corresponding sides are proportional corresponding sides are proportional that is consider e dash b dash a dash b dash students what will be its corresponding side of the other similar triangle that is ab so let's consider base of this big triangle ob dash what's the base of this smaller triangle it is ob you need not to consider this hypotenuse it's of no use so put this as equation number one i hope it's pretty clear these two triangles being similar their corresponding sides are proportional so that is how we have managed to obtain this particular equation right we need to choose second pair of triangles so what to do is we we'll consider these two triangles as well consider these two triangles this triangle and this triangle these two triangles are also similar now look this is 90 degree this is also 90 degree and this angle is equal to this angle being vertically opposite angles isn't it so these two triangles m f o and a dash f b dash are also similar that is triangle m f o is similar to triangle a dash f b dash therefore students again the corresponding sides must be proportional and ensure the left hand side of both the equations must be same so these two triangles being similar the corresponding sides are proportional so let's say a dash b dash a dash b dash the corresponding side of a dash b dash would be om and students om is equal to ab om is equal to ab so left hand side of these two equations becomes equal right and it's equal to let's consider base base of the bigger triangle it is fb dash what about base of the small triangle this one that is of so please ensure that after obtaining these two equations of the left hand side of these two equations must be same so that we can equate the right hand side of these two equations right so again i repeat consider two pair of triangles they must be similar prove that they are similar and then the corresponding sides are proportional so you will be able to obtain these two equations right and write the equation in such a manner that the left hand side are equal so that we can equate the right hand side of these three equations so from one and two what we get is from one and two we get ob dash divided by ob is equal to fb dash divided by of right now look students as per the new cartesian sign convention we all are aware that the distances are to be measured from the optical center so no need to change these terms because they are already having o as the initial letter fb dash needs to be changed so fb dash may be written as ob dash minus of isn't it fb dash may be written as ob dash minus of so what to do this ob dash divided by ob is equal to fb dash it is ob dash minus of divided by of now all the terms are initializing with letter o right now we can make use of sign convention so let's make use of sign convention using <coughs> sign convention and we are all aware all the distances measured around the direction of the incident ray from the optical center are to be taken as positive else the distances measured from the optical center against the direction of the incident ray are to be taken as negative so let's make use of the sign convention ob ob it's measured against the direction of the incident ray this is the incident ray this is the incident ray from left to right so ob is measured from right to left so obviously it is to be taken as negative ob it's the object distance ob dash ob dash is measured along the direction of the incident ray and whenever image is real in case of lens it would be positive What about OF? Focal length of convex lens OF that's positive plus L. This is the real focus. Real means positive, right? OF it's measured along the direction of the incident ray. That is from left to right. Now, students, let's substitute these values. What you get is 
v divided by minus q is equal to ob dash that is v minus f divided by f you can cross multiply it let's check it out so what do we get this vf is equal to minus uv plus uf so still further what we'll do is let's rearrange the terms so we get uv is equal to uf minus vf simply rearrange the terms right uv when taken on the left hand side it sign will get changed and replace uv with vf so we'll get this now students in the last step divide throughout by uvf dividing throughout by uvf what we get is uv divided by uvf is equal to uf divided by uvf minus vf divided by uvf so what do we get 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u so student this is the relationship between object distance u the image distance v and the focal length f and this relationship is known as the lens formula or the lens equation right so this is applicable in case of lens students you must remember in the case of mirrors the mirror formula is 1 by v plus 1 by u equals to 1 by f the lens formula is 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f so this is the mathematical verification of lens equation simply by cancelling two pairs of triangles and uh, equating the Uh, uh, corresponding sides being proportional and equating those two equations and using sign convention, we can easily find this particular result, right? Now, we can also find out the expression for the linear magnification. So, for that, what to do is let's consider, students, let's consider equation one. Let us consider equation one, this one. Now here. Let's make use of the sign convention directly. So let's see what we get. A dash B dash. Now, as I told you, the distance is measured perpendicular to the principal axis and in the downward direction. That is to be taken as negative. I told you the size of the image is considered to be h two. The size of the object is considered to be h one. So there, the image is inverted, measured downward. So it is to be taken as negative. So it is minus h two. I'm making use of sign convention, right? What about AB? It's measured perpendicular to the axis and in the upward direction, so it is plus h one. Make use of sign convention. What about ob dash? Ob dash. It's plus b. Ob dash. It's plus b. And what about ob? Ob. Incident ray is along this direction, and ob is measured against the direction of the incident ray. So it needs to be a sign negative sign. So minus minus. It will get cancelled out. So we get h two by h one is equal to b by u. And students, the ratio of size of the image to the size of the object is known as linear magnification. So this is the formula for the linear magnification in terms of object distance and the image distance in case of lenses. Here I must mention that in the case of mirror, linear magnification is minus v by u, while in case of lens, it is plus v by u. So this is how we are able to easily mathematically verify the lens formula as well as the formula for the linear magnification, right, students? So case one is over. Now, as we are aware, in a convex lens, nature of the image may be either real or it may be virtual. In case the object is placed beyond f, the nature of the image is always always real. Now, in case this is an exceptional case. In case the object is placed between optical side and the focus, then the image is formed on the same side as that of the object, and in that case, the nature of the image is virtual. So we will prove the lens formula for the virtual image. So let's consider case number two. Let's try case number two. <clears throat> Here, ensure to place the object between the optical center and the focus optical center and the focus so 
Let's start with case 2. So when image is virtual. And this is case 2. Let's draw the ray diagram first. So this is the ray diagram. This is the lens, convex lens, this is the optical center. This is the principal axis. This is supposed to focus. This is the reference line from where the deviation of light is to be considered. Object, remember, it is to be placed between optical center and the focus. And this is the real focus of the convex lens. So what's the first rule? Ray parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it will tend to pass through the focus. What's the second rule? The ray passing through the optical center, it will remain undeviated. So obviously, students, these two refracted rays will never intersect over here. The gap between them keeps on increasing. So what we'll do is, we'll produce it in the backward direction. That is, we'll try to draw virtual lines, dotted lines. So let's see. So image would be formed on the same side as that of the object. Image would be formed on the same side as that of the object. So this is the case where the nature of the image obtained is virtual, like this. Here the image is formed. So as I told you earlier, the intersection of two dotted lines that would represent virtual image. This is A dash, this is B dash. So students, what's the nature of the image? Virtual. It is erect, formed on the same side as that of the object and it is magnified, right? So the nature of the image is virtual. Let's verify lens formula for this case as well, right? So what to do is, Consider this to be M. Consider this point to be M. Now obviously AB is equal to MO. These two are equal. Thus being parallel to the principal axis. Right? We need to consider two pair of triangles. So what we'll do is, let's consider a triangle A dash, OB dash and triangle AOB. Students consider these two triangles. A dash, OB dash and triangle AOB. This angle is common. This is the common angle. And this is 90 and this is 90. So these two triangles by AA corollary are similar. Therefore, their corresponding sides must be proportional. That is why A dash B dash divided by corresponding side of A dash B dash is AB. And it is equal to consider base OB dash divided by OB. Put this as equation number 1. Right? Wherever applicable, do start writing the distance from letter O, optical center. Okay, we need to consider the other pair of triangles as well, right? For that, what we do is consider this triangle, the bigger one. That is, consider triangle A dash F B dash. Consider triangle A dash F B dash. This one, students. A dash F B dash. And consider this triangle, this one, M F O. MFO, triangle MFO. Again, I am repeating. Students consider triangle A dash, F, B dash, and triangle MFO. This angle is common to both the triangles, and this is 90 degree, this is also 90 degree. So these two triangles by A corollary are similar. Therefore, their corresponding sides again must be proportional. So, while writing the equation, please ensure the left hand side of both the equations must be same. So, A dash B dash, what's the corresponding side of A dash B dash? It's MO. And students, MO is equal to AB. So that the left hand side of these three equations becomes equal. And it is equal to, let's consider the base. What's the base of the bigger triangle? B dash F divided by what's the base of the smaller triangle that is OF ok we have obtained these two equations now students what to do we need to equate these two because left hand side of these three equations are equal therefore from 1 and 2 we get from 1 and 2 we get OB dash divided by OB is equal to B dash F divided by OF. Now look, as for the sign convention, all the distances are to be measured from the optical center. The initial alphabet should be capital letter O. 
So b dash f needs to be changed. This is b dash f. b dash f may be written as o b dash plus o f. Again, I repeat, b dash f may be written as o b dash plus o f. So what we get is o b dash divided by o b is equal to o b dash plus o f. Here I have written b dash f as o b dash plus o f. Right. Now all the distances are measured from optical center. Now we can make use of sign convention. So using sign convention, what we get is let's make use of sign convention. Here again the same rules. The distances measured along the direction of the incident ray is to be taken as positive. This is the direction of the incident ray. That is from left to right. This is the object. This is the incident ray. Right. So, all the distance measured from O along the direction of the incident ray will be taken as positive. So, OF is positive, obviously. Focal length of a convex lens is real, so it's positive. What about OB? It's minus U. What about OB dash? It's minus V. Virtual image, it will have negative sign, right, in case of lenses. So, let's substitute these values over here. So, OB dash is minus V. OB is minus U is equal to OB dash again minus V plus F divided by F. Minus minus get cancelled. So we'll be left with this. Let's cross multiply it. Therefore, what do you get is Vf is equal to minus Uv plus Uf. So it can be also written as Uv is equal to Uf minus Vf. Correct students? So in the last step, you are aware we need to divide throughout by UVF. So dividing throughout by UVF we get dividing throughout by UVF. We will get the desired result. So what do we get is UV divided by UVF. So 1 by F would be left over here, UF divided by UVF. So 1 by V would be left and here 1 by U is left. So this is student the lens formula. And as I have stated, this formula is valid whether the image is real or it is virtual. It is immaterial, it is of no consequence whether the image is real or virtual. In both this scenario, this formula between U, V and F, this relationship between object distance, image distance and focal length will remain applicable. Right? So that's lens formula for you in case of virtual image. Now let's try to verify the expression for the linear magnification as well. So consider a first equation. Consider a first equation. So consider equation 1. What do you get is a dash b dash divided by a b. This one a dash b dash divided by a b is equal to o b dash divided by o b. O b dash divided by o b. Let's make use of the sign convention. As we are aware, height of the size, height of the object h1, height or size of the image that is h2. So both are direct, both are measured perpendicular to the principal axis and in the upward direction. So as for the convention, both are to be assigned positive sign. So a dash b dash is plus h2, a b is plus h1, o b dash, make use of the sign convention, o b dash is minus b, o b is minus c. So, linear magnification, as you are aware students, it is defined as the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object, which would be V by U. So, look, the same formula has been obtained both for real image as well as for virtual image. So, students, this is the mathematical verification, right, for obtaining the lens formula as well as the expression for linear magnification in terms of U and V. So, convex lens, both the cases are covered. So, I hope you have uh, understood the mathematical derivation. And uh, if you like my video, do share the link with your colleagues and uh, please try to hit the like button. Okay, that inner sort will give me motivation. And students, I need you to reciprocate in the similar manner. Right, thank you so much.